South Korean boy band BTS reigns supreme over Billboard charts as their fans, their army, fawn over their good looks and slick moves. But as they move through their 20s, an ominous obligation approaches. A minimum one and a half years mandatory military service required of every healthy South Korean male between 18 and 28. The issue of mandatory military service for entertainers like BTS is complicated by the fact that high-achieving South Korean athletes have seen their army obligations reduced. After winning a gold medal in the 2018 Asian Games, soccer star Son Hung Min was required to do just three weeks of Marine Corps training completed earlier this year, although he will also have to perform some extra community service. BTS is famous doing public relations, informing other countries about South Korea. They should be exempted from military service because they promote South Korean culture. There are many other men in South Korea, so why are they trying to take BTS, which plays such an important role for the country? Shin Myung Sup spent 21 months in the army and warns of a declining population and the ongoing threat of North Korea. We can only maintain national security when we have a strong military defence. If such preferential treatment increases, the number of people entering the military will decrease. The military will be shaken and it will be a threat to national security. South Korea's National Assembly has tabled a bill that would offer certain artists the opportunity to delay the service for two years. Shin argues a clear policy is needed but a special deal for BTS would be unfair. Because BTS works for an entertainment company, I don't think it's right for them to get exemptions while performing. BTS does generate interest in our country. But I think giving preferential treatment to BTS discriminates against other men. A recent survey showed that most South Koreans support some type of deferral for K-pop idols that contribute to South Korea's international reputation. A decision has to be made soon because, for BTS, time is running out. Joining us is Frank Smith out of Seoul. Frank, tell us more about this mandatory military service in South Korea. How long has it been in place? Well, uh, they started mandatory military service here, conscription, back in 1957. That's just three years or four years after the Korean War ended. It was based, actually, on a 1948 law. And it starts out with about five weeks of basic training or boot camp, and recruits can either enter the Army, the Marine Corps, the Navy, or the Air Force. The terms of service, the length of service, varies a little bit. If you enter the, the Navy or the Air Force, you have to do a month or two uh, longer. And presumably it's in place because of the threat from North Korea. What are those months of training like? Are some soldiers actually patrolling the border between North and South Korea, for example? Well, military um, service in South Korea is generally considered in two different ways. It's boring and it's also stressful. If you're deployed uh, near the DMZ, the demilitarized zone, it's the heavily, most heavily fortified border um, in the world. There are something like uh, 700,000 North Korean troops just on the other side of that border. In terms of the boring end of things, uh, former president of South Korea, No Mu Yun, said uh, serving military service was really kind of a waste of time. And since then, especially uh, liberal administrations here in South Korea have tried to find ways of reducing the terms of service and making it a little bit easier uh, for uh, conscripts to serve here. That's some incredible statement from South Korean politicians there. How much public support is there for military service then? And it sounds like from your report that enough people are comfortable with exemptions. For example, I'm thinking of mandatory military service in Israel and how trying to get out of it is really not socially acceptable. But it seems like in South Korea that's different. 
Well, it's not that different. If you're trying to get out of it, the public is quite strongly against that type of thing. What it is interested in at, at about the 60% level is providing exemptions for people that are, you know, doing extraordinary things in the name of the country. Uh, I give the example of the athlete Son Hung Min uh, during the, the report there. It's also extended to um, classical musicians and other types of artists. But that involves only really a delay. And there's also a strong support for alternative service here in South Korea. Previously, conscientious objectors were jailed. There were once up to 500 conscientious objectors behind bars in South Korea. They've been released in, in recent years, and now they're moving to an alternative service, which you know is longer than the mandatory 18 months of active military duty here. Frank, a w very quick question. What are the chances that South Korea would move to a professional army and away from mandatory military service? Well, I think we really have to look at the relationship between South Korea and North Korea. North Korea still presents a military threat to South Korea, and there are periodic flare-ups in the tension on the Korean Peninsula. Given that that continues, we're not going to see uh, you know, a career professional army here in South Korea uh, until there is really a calming down of tension and much better relations between North and South Korea. Frank Smith, thank you.